Hello, welcome to Zuzi Reads, a podcast where I help people master English in a joyful way. How to Be a Little Sot by Simon Brett is a book I read in Czech in my early teens. It's not going to enrich your life with valuable insights into a child's psyche, but you may have a good laugh and learn a great deal of colloquial English. It's witty, well-written, and the main character, the baby, is highly annoying and unfortunately rather easy to despise. You will probably feel sorry for the poor parents. I hope, however, that in case you read all of the book, it won't discourage you from having children. I recommend this little Brett's diary Not because it would be inspiring or full of wisdom, but because it's a wonderful source of colloquial language, thus suitable for advanced learners of English, B2 or C1 level. Although I don't often recommend bilingual books, the ones with translation on the next page, in this case I would. The Czech translation by Ferentisik Frelich is superb, very crafty indeed. So comparing the English and Czech sentences is a great source of learning phrases and vocabulary in context. The language is quite challenging at times, so unless you get the help of the translation, I'd say you must have reached at least B2 level to enjoy this. The diary is structured into 12 months, starting with the day this baby was born until he is a one-year-old brat. Now, I'll read day eight from the eighth month, which is about a visit to a clinic for an assessment test, and also a few short entries from month nine, when he is put into a playpen and discovers a new skill. Month eight, day eight. Major visit to the clinic today for my eighth month assessment test. This morning at breakfast, I was sitting on the floor by the kitchen table when I heard her talking to him about it. Don't think we will have any problems, she said airily. Baby's development is exactly as it should be, according to my childcare book. Good, he said absently from behind his paper. And I'm not going to be put off by what happened last time. I'm definitely going to have another go at weaning soon. Good, he said. So I should be able to go back to work part-time, just as we planned. I don't know. When will they realize that these days I am the one who does the planning around here? I had to think fast and came up with a plan which I put into action immediately by falling heavily against the kitchen table leg. This produced exactly what I had intended, a bleeding lip and a bruise the size of a golf ball on my temple. However, stuff. Had to wait quite a while in the waiting room when we got to the clinic. I passed the time by sitting up straight, waving my hands around, picking up objects from the floor in my vice-like grip, banging on things and making little gurgly noises that sounded almost like speech. Then we got inside and saw the doctor. I went totally silent and listless while she propped me up on the table. The doctor took one look at me and reacted exactly as I'd hoped. How did the baby get that bruise on its forehead and the split lip? Fell against the kitchen table, she replied, sounding very guilty. I see, said the doctor, mentally marking his card. Well, how about basic developmental skills? Can the baby sit up unaided? Yes, of course. She replied, removing the sport of her hands. I keeled slowly over onto my side. I see, said the doctor once again. 
Well, we'd better test the hearing. I must admit it wasn't easy keeping a straight face. There is something deeply silly about a grown man moving round the room, whispering at you from lots of different positions. And it's hard not to react when he's reduced to putting his lips right up against your ear and belowing. But I didn't crack. Not the tiniest flinch. I just lay there, silent and listless, until he let out another, I see, and wrote something down on his clipboard. And what the doctor thought he was doing, waving silly colored objects at me and constantly popping his head round the corner of things I just don't know. But again, I was perfect. Just lay there, gazing listlessly ahead. I see. More notes were confined to the clipboard. It was the same when he tried to get me to pick things up. I resisted the temptation to seize all the little objects that were pushed towards me and continued staring apathetically. Normally he's very good at this, she said nervously. Picks up everything, it's this month's new trick. The doctor gave her a long, slow look. Though I said myself, the bruise and the split lip had really been a brainwave. No chance he was going to believe anything, she said, after he'd seen those. He finally abandoned trying to get a response out of me and concentrated on her. I'm sorry to say she left the clinic in tears. Cruel you may say, but I had to put a stop to all this talk of her returning to work part-time. And I think I've managed that. To cheer her up in the car on my way home, I sat up straight, waved my hands around, picked up everything within reach in my vice-like grip, banged on things and made little gurgling noises that sounded almost like speech. Well, This was very mean of him, wasn't it? So cruel. Well, let's have a look at month nine, day 12. Incarcerated in the playpen again this morning. It's inhuman to detain anyone without trial in a space only four foot by four foot. I wonder how you get in touch with Amnesty International. Day 14. Ignored the plastic toys, rattles and general rubbish my captor threw into my cell for me to play with, and concentrated instead on the abacus of beads attached to the playpen wall. Pulled and rattled them all morning. They're getting looser. It's going to be a long job, but I'll persevere. Would form an escape committee, but it seems a bit daft, since I'd be the only member. Perhaps I should invite the cat to join. Day 16. Thoughts of escape from the playpen have been diverted by the development of a new skill. I've suddenly found I can poke my fingers into things. Or, to be more accurate, I can poke a finger into things. It came to me in a flash. When she picked me out of my cot this morning, I poked my finger in her eye. She took a dim view of this, so I poked my finger in her other eye, which made her view even dimmer. Day 17. Poked finger in his eye. Day 18. Poked finger in cat's eye. Ruined my chances of getting it to join the escape committee. Day 19. Poked finger in her mother's eye. Effect greatly enhanced by the fact that he laughed when I did it. Atmosphere between her mother and him even frostier than usual. And of course, there is more and more and more. But if you feel like reading, you need to get the book and read the rest yourself.
And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode about this little annoying brat or sod. And remember that you can find the link to the text in the show notes below. Be well. And until next time. Ciao, ciao.